Hello Sigmas! If you have been following the mechanics course on this channel, then you will know that most of the pro problems which I discuss on this channel are real life problems. That is, you can experience them in real life. But if I have chosen a problem which you cannot experience in real life, then that is because I have found that problem to be very interesting. That is, I have found that problem to be conceptually rich, a single problem that will teach you a lot of stuff. And that is exactly the case of today's problem. In this problem, we have two curves. One of the curve is x squared equal to 2y and another curve is y squared equal to 2x. And you can see that if I substitute y equal to 2 over here, I will get x equal to 2 and if I substitute x equal to 2 over here, I will get y equal to 2 and hence uh, 2 comma 2 has to be a solution of these uh, curves, right? That is these two curves should meet at a point 2 comma 2 and that is exactly the case in this uh, diagram, right? You can see that the two curves are meeting at the point. 2 comma 2 and uh, you might ask then what exactly are we supposed to find uh, in this uh, problem well in this problem you can see that these two curves are bounding a uh, area right you can see over here that these two curves are bounding this area that i am highlighting in yellow and what we are supposed to find in this problem is the center of mass of that area. We have to find the center of mass of the area that is bounded by these two curves. We have to find the center of mass of the area that I have highlighted in yellow. Now we already know how to find center of masses. Since this is a two dimensional body that is a body that is present in two dimensions in the x and y plane. Hence so what I'm going to do is let us say this one is the x axis and this one is the y axis. Then I'm going to divide this area into elemental areas. Let's say this is a very, very small elemental area that has a thickness uh, dx and uh, lies at a distance of x from the y axis. From the origin, it is present at a distance of x. And uh, this uh, lower point over here is, let's say, let's call it y1. And uh, the point, uh, upper point, right? The upper point over here, let's call it y2. Then we know from the formula of center of mass uh, that uh, the x coordinate of the center of mass since uh, this is a two dimensional body the center of mass will have x coordinate as well as the y coordinate so the x coordinate uh, of the center of mass would be equal to one upon the total area of that uh, area bound by the two curves integral from zero to since x is going from 0 to 2 as you can see over here that the x is going from 0 to 2 hence it will the integral will also go from 0 to 2 x because uh, this is nothing but the x coordinate of the center of mass of the elemental area that we have considered that is this rod that I have drawn here in red we have this is uh, going to be the center of mass of that rod i have already explained all this in my center of mass video so you if you have not checked it out yet go check it out first because we'll be using concepts from that video and if you have not watched that you will not know how to find the center of mass of any body and hence you will have no clue about what i am doing in this video so we have integral from 0 to 2 x dx or rather x da because this is a two dimensional body so we are going to have a integral from 0 to 2 x da and similarly the y coordinate of the center of mass that i shall call y c on would be equal to 1 by a integral from 0 to 2 again because y also goes from 0 to 2 y da but for this, the elemental uh, area is going to be different that we shall consider later. For now, we'll be considering only the x coordinate of the center of mass. That is, we'll be concerned only about the x coordinate of the center of mass. We are going to find that first. 
So the x coordinate of the center of mass is going to be equal to 1 by a, 1 by a integral from uh, 0 to 2 x and what is going to be d? d is nothing but the area of that rod. Again, this is the rod and da is the area of that rod, right? The area of the elemental mass that we have conceded. So what is going to be the area of that rod? It is simply going to be equal to y2 minus y1 dx, right? That is uh, exactly what the area of uh, that rod going to be, right? It is like a rectangle. So that rod is nothing but like a rectangle, a bar. And uh, if uh, this uh, bar has a lower coordinate of y1 and y2, then its length is equal to y2 minus y1. And uh, its width is equal to dx. So the area of that rod is uh, obviously going to be y2 minus y1 times dx. Okay, so what is exactly y2? Since y2 lies on the orange curve, as you can see, which is given by this y square equal to 2x, and hence y2 is nothing but uh, equal to under root of 2x. And uh, similarly, we have y1 over here. y1 corresponds to the blue curve over here, this x squared equal to 2y. And hence y1 is nothing but x squared divided by 2. And this is exactly what we are going to substitute in this equation, right? This y1 and y2, we are going to substitute in this uh, center of mass expression x u o m if i do that i will get 1 by a integral from 0 to 2 x what was y2 y2 was uh, equal to under root of 2 x minus so y1 was equal to x square by 2 dx okay now solving this is really simple we will have 1 upon a integral 0 to 2 under root of 2x so it will be under root of 2x to the power it will be a root of x times uh, x to the power 1 that is 1 plus half so it will be x to the power 3 by 2 minus x square will become x cubed by 2 dx so we will get 1 upon a integral from 0 to 2 under root of 2 x to the power 3 by 2 let us integrate it directly right so i'll be getting under root of 2 what will be the integration of x to the power 3 by 2 it will be x to the power 5 by 2 right so i'll be left with x to the power 5 by 2 divided by 5 by 2 and uh, minus the uh, integration of x cubed is uh, x to the power 4 divided by 2 into 4 i will get which is 8 and this will run from 0 to 2. Now, if I substitute x equal to 0, I'm just going to get 0. So, I'll only substitute the upper limit. So, I'll be left with 1 upon a under root of 2. If I substitute 2 over there, I will get 2 to the power 5 by 2 uh, divided by 5 by 2 minus 2 to the power 4 divided by 8. Okay, so I'll be left with 1 upon a. What is 2 to the power 5 by 2? that is under root of 2 to the power 5 that will just give us uh, 2 to the power 4 times uh, under root of 2 so this is nothing but uh, root of 2 and root of 2 to the power 5 divided by 5 by 2 minus 2 to the power 4 what is 2 to the power 4 that is 4 into 4 which is 16 by 8. so i will get 1 upon a what is uh, 2 to the root of 2 to the power 5? That is just uh, 4 root 2. So I'll be getting 4 root of 2 into root of 2. So I will get another 2, 4 into 2 into 2 from this 5 by 2 over here. Divided by 5 minus 16 by 8, which is just 2. So I'll be left with 1 upon a. 4 uh, multiplied by 2 into 2 is a 4, which is 16 by 5 minus 2. So I'll be getting 1 upon a, 16 minus uh, 10 is just 6 by 5. Okay, so I'm getting the x coordinate of the center of mass as 6 upon 5a.
And similarly, we can find the y coordinate of the center of mass. To find the y coordinate of the center of mass, what we do is we consider our elemental rod of that kind in the x direction of the area. That is, I'm going to consider the elemental rod as horizontal. Previously, we had considered a vertical rod. Right? This is a vertical rod. But now we are going to consider this horizontal rod that has a, a width of dy, a very, very small width, has a width dy. And it has a length, right? To find the length, uh, what we do again is I'm going to define this point as x2 and this point over here as x1, right? x1 and x2. Then again, what we have to do is exactly the same procedure as we did for the x coordinate of the center of mass. To find the y coordinate of the center of mass, y c o m, what we have to do is 1 upon a times integral from 0 to 2 y dA, right? y dA over here you can see it is integral from 0 to 2 y dA. Now what is going to be dA now? dA is simply going to be x2 minus x1 times dy. So dA this time is uh, going to be equal to x2 minus x1 times dy, right? That is going to be the area of that uh, horizontal rod which we just considered. And what are these uh, points x2 and x1? You can see that the point x1 corresponds to the orange curve. And for the orange curve uh, over here, we have x is equal to y square divided by 2, right? And for the blue curve over there, which uh, corresponds uh, to x2, right? x2 corresponds, this is x1, or uh, this, this is x1, yes. This is x1, which corresponds to y square divided by 2 and x2 corresponds to the blue curve as you can see x2 this x2 lies in the blue curve and hence x2 is actually equal to so x2 is actually equal to under root of 2y because x2 corresponds to the blue curve and x1 corresponds to the orange curve if that is the case, then let us substitute x2 and x1 over here. We will get 1 upon a integral from 0 to 2 y times what was x2? x2 was equal to under root of 2y. So we have under root of 2y minus x1 was equal to y square by 2 dy. Now I want you to notice a very interesting thing that this equation is the same as the equation of the center of mass of the x coordinate. That is the x coordinate of the center of mass. You can see, except that if you just replace uh, x over here, let us call this equation number one. So in equation number one, if you just replace x by y, you get this equation, equation number two. And hence, they are actually exactly the same equation because over here, y is just a dummy variable, right? I could simply, instead of y, I can just replace it by x, v, u, any other variable. It does not really matter. In fact, it is an indefinite integral. So it just does not matter, right? And hence, what you can do is that I can directly write the answer to this integral because the answer to this integral is going to be exactly same as the answer to the integral of the x coordinate of the center of mass. And hence over here what you will get is 6 by 5a which is the same as the x coordinate of the center of mass. And if you do not believe me then what you can do is you can solve this integral in a similar fashion like you did for the x coordinate of the center of mass and verify it yourself take it as a homework verify it yourself that the y coordinate of the center of mass is also equal to 6 by 5 a now you might wonder what this a is right you might wonder what is the total area of uh, that of that uh, area which is uh, bound by the two curves what is the total area of that area to find the total area, what we do is uh, just integral from 0 to 2, right? And the first curve, now we can do it either for x or y as you have just seen. So what we will get is integral from 0 to 2 square root of 2x minus x square by 2 dx. 
right uh, here i have what i've done is i called it uh, y as a function of x right i found y as a function of x and then this is how you find the area of that curve right it makes sense so right? just think about it once yourself then you will realize that it does really make sense because of what i've done is uh, the y coordinate over here Right, the y coordinate for the blue curve is x square by 2 is equal to y. And for the orange curve, the y coordinate is uh, equal to square root of uh, x. And hence, so what I've done is I have found the area using this thing over here. Let me use the red pen. Yeah, I have found area using this elemental area. That is, I considered this bar, right? And then to find the total area, you perform this integration on that elemental area. That is exactly what I've done. I have performed uh, the integral on the first elemental area that we had considered. The elemental area uh, which was vertical. I have considered the vertical elemental area and uh, then I have performed this integral to find the total area of the curve. What you could do in fact is you could have considered the horizontal area, uh, this horizontal rod 2, right? But I, again, as I told you, you would get the same integral right over here. You can see you get the same integral. Only thing here, x will be replaced by y, which does not really make any difference. The total area is obviously going to remain the same. It does not matter what elemental uh, area you consider on that area. So over here, if you solve this integral, what do you get? You get integral from uh, 0 to 2 square root of 2x. Uh, this is root of x and hence you are going to get a square root of 2 x to the power 3 by 2 right because uh, square root of x if you integrate it you get x to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 minus x squared would become x cubed divided by 6 from 0 to 2 and then if you solve this you get uh, 2 by 3 square root of 2 and x to the power 3 by 2 becomes a uh, square root of x cubed which is 2 cubed now because I've substituted the upper limit and there is no need to substitute the lower limit because it will give just 0 and then again if you substitute 2 in place of x cubed you get 2 cubed divided by 6. Okay so you are going to get a 2 by 3 multiplied by 4 you you can see that the square root of 2 is going to combine with one of the square root of 2 that will give you 2 and one of the 2 is going to come out from 2 square. So 2 into 2 is 4 minus I'm going to get a 8 by 6 over here. So I will get 8 into 1 by 3 or uh, I can take 8 by 3 itself outside. I will be left with uh, 1 minus 1 by 2. 1 minus half and hence uh, a is nothing but equal to 8 by 6. So if a is 8 by 6, let me call this uh, these equations. First, let me number these equations for the xum. Let me call this equation number what uh, this was true. So let me call this equation number 3 and this one as uh, equation number 4 and this one as equation number 5. So what I'm going to do is put 5 in 3 and 4. So if I put 5 in 3 and 4, I'm going to get xum equal to what was it? 6 by 5 divided by a. So I will get 6 by 8. And similarly, ycom would also be equal to the same thing. I will get 6 by 5 divided by a and hence so 6 by 8. So in fact, uh, xum is equal to ycum which is uh, equal to 36 by 40. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you the reason why this problem is so very interesting. And in fact, this thing that we got over here that the x coordinate of the center of mass is equal to the y coordinate of the center of mass is actually not a coincidence. If you look at this figure carefully over here, let me erase uh, this stuff over here. So if you look at this figure carefully, what you will notice is that this figure is actually symmetrical about this line, which is x equal to y. And if it is symmetrical about that line, then what we have found is that the center of mass should lie along the line of symmetry. And 
this is actually a trick for symmetrical bodies if i if we consider symmetrical bodies then the center of mass lies along the point or line of uh, symmetry. Now, what exactly do I mean by this? Let us consider two bodies, right? Let us consider a circle and a square. Now, these could be one dimensional by which I mean the circle could be a ring or a disc or to the or a two dimensional body like a disc and similarly for the square it could be just be a wire or a plane right then if you draw the symmetrical axis the axis of symmetry of this circle right like this then there will be axis of symmetry like this like right all the diameters of the circle are going to be its axis of symmetry so if you draw all the diameter then you will see that the diameters meet at the center right you can see that the diameters meet at the center and hence the center is actually the center of mass of the ring or the disc and we know that fact similarly for this square if uh, we draw the various lines which divides it symmetrically right these are uh, diagonals and these lines which divides it symmetrically then again we can find that all these lines which divide the square symmetrically actually meet at the center of the square and hence the center of mass of the square should also lie at the center and this is exactly what i've written here the center of mass lies along the point of symmetry for these kind of uh, bodies uh, where there are so many symmetry axes but for bodies of which uh, can do not have so many symmetric axes in fact has only one symmetric axis for example if i draw a kite right if i draw this kite which is uh, not symmetrical this kite is not symmetrical you can see that this kite is symmetrical only about one of uh, the axis and let me call this the line of symmetry the line of symmetry And hence, the center of mass, if you try to find the center of mass of this kite, which you can take again as a homework, then you will find that the center of mass of this kite will lie along the line of symmetry. And hence, if you can find a point of symmetry of a body, or if it does not have a point of symmetry, the line of symmetry of a body, then actually the center of mass is going to lie along the point or the line of symmetry. And hence, what you will see here is that if I call this the y-axis, right, if I call this the y-axis and uh, here the x-axis, then you will find that the x-coordinate of the center of mass of that kite will be zero because it is going to lie along the line of symmetry and it will only have a y-coordinate of the center of mass. And that is the reason I had taken this uh, problem. This is the trick that makes this problem so very interesting and to motivate me to create more such interesting problem do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel i will see you in the next video with another very interesting problem thank you for watching